divorce is not something that we see. It is not something that we imagine. There isn't a class that we take when we get married that has to do with just in case your marriage doesn't work out because each and every one of us enters into our marriages with the fantasy and the hope that it's going to last forever. And for those of us, sometimes that fairy tale does come to an end. And as a result, when many of us hear the word divorce, or we even think about the word divorce, we think first and foremost, that's not me. I'm not someone who gets divorced. I don't want my kids to be the kids of divorced parents. That's just the tip of the iceberg of some of the images that may be coming to mind when you hear the word, or perhaps those were some of the images that came to mind when you realized that your marriage was ending. And as you also know, it's far more complex than those images that we have. And what I want to talk to you guys about today are some of the effects that divorce has. Some are positive, some are neutral, and some of you are definitely seeing as negatives, but I want to open the curtain to you guys on some of them today and talk a little bit more about them. So the first one, and it's the most obvious one, but I think when we're in the thick of it, we don't necessarily name it this way. And number one is that divorce is an actual grieving process. It is like a death. Okay. It is not something that TV sensational sensationalizes because that's just not reality. And there are so many losses associated with a divorce that you don't necessarily understand why it feels so overwhelming, but it's because you don't equate the end of your marriage to also associate with the end of your fantasy, the fairy tale. It also has to do with potentially having concerns about your financial future. It's about mourning the loss of the family that you had growing old together, just to name a few. And so what we don't allow ourselves is the time and space to really look at and grieve every single one of those losses. And it's not only that we don't give ourselves enough space, it's that we think that it's supposed to look a certain way, that we're supposed to go from step one to step two to step three. And when it's not linear and we're taking steps back through our process, we start getting really judgmental and we lose all the momentum that we've gained in our healing process because we start, those negative voices in our head just start talking and bashing us. And what's really important is that we understand that in order to normalize the emotions, right, being okay with whatever is coming up is a mindfulness practice. And it's something that I needed support in. And I reached out for support to, to have somebody help me to see that because I was constantly having thoughts and then judging myself and making myself feel worse instead of just acknowledging the emotions and feeling through what that experience was like. And so for those of you who are listening, it's so important that we have other people who are supporting us and paying attention to our thoughts in a way that we're not. We're so immersed in our own head that sometimes we don't necessarily, like we're blind to see certain things or to see ways that we're feeling. 